Okay, guys, so today we're going to have a look at how to calculate PC cap. First of all, try to put notes about the information that you get in the case study. You can write in the past paper, uh, you can annotate it. It's going to help you throughout creating the cash flow forecast. So here, you, as you can see, I am underlining the price, the quantity, certain information, for example, that the 70% of customers pay cash, the 30% pay credit one month later, that the rent is paid at the start of each quarter, so uh, in month one, in January and in April, labor costs are $750, 50% of sales revenue per month. Here, I'm highlighting the fact that it's sales revenue that we need to calculate it from, and overheads are 400 per month. So let's so let's have a look at the monthly cash flow forecast, how to write it. First, the most important thing is to write the headings. So we start with cash inflows and capital of owners, then sales revenue in cash, sales revenue coming from debtors, and then we always put the total cash inflows. Then another heading would be the cash outflows. Then we list all the cash outflows that we have there, rent, labor costs, raw materials, and overheads. At the bottom, it's important to write net cash flows, the opening balance and closing balance. Then we write the months that we need to prepare the cash flow forecast for. What I suggest is to cross out the lines where we have headings so that it doesn't tempt us to put any information inside that part. So now we can put in the first numbers. We know that at the beginning, the savings or the starting capital was $3,000. So we put that as the capital injection in January. Then we need to calculate the revenue. The revenue in January would be the quantity of 1,300 cupcakes times price of $5. And then we calculate the cash. So 70% of the revenue is going to be paid out in cash, and 30% is going to be paid out as credit one month later. We insert the values into the cash flow forecast, and then we can calculate the revenue for the months of February until June. We use the same methodology. Calculate the 70% that is paid out in cash, and then the 30% that is paid out in credit. Notice how I insert the numbers. When we're finished, we put in the total cash inflows and we continue uh, to the cash outflows. The rent we insert in January and April. We can put lines across the months where we have no cash outflows. Then we insert the labor costs, $750 per month, and the raw materials is always going to be 50% of the sales revenue. So as you can see, for January, the revenue is going to be $6,500. For February, it's going to be $8,500. And also the same for the months continuing. We insert that into the cash flow forecast. Then we insert the overheads and then the total cash outflows. To calculate the net cash flow, we always have to take the total cash inflows minus total cash outflows, and if the result is a negative number, we put it in brackets. Opening balance plus net cash flow equals closing balance, and then we copy out the closing balance uh, onto the opening balance of the next month. We calculate the net cash flows for each month, and we insert the right numbers also for the opening and closing balance. That makes the cash flow forecast complete. Now moving on to the next task, uh, for C, we're supposed to calculate the forecasted net profit at the end of June. So we write down the formula for net profit. Net profit equals total revenues minus total costs. And then to calculate total revenue. Actually, we always look at what is sold each month. We don't care if it's sold in cash or in credit. So here we take the 1,300 cupcakes sold in January times 5 plus 
1,700 times 5. And because the sales numbers are going to be the same for February until June, we multiply that by 5, as in 5 months. To calculate total costs, we can have a look at the cash flow forecast. Now, what are going to be the total costs? Everything that is variable costs plus fixed costs. So we can actually add the total cash outflows in order to get the total costs. And the result is 4,600. Now, in order to calculate the total revenues, we can also have a look at the cash flow forecast. But it's wrong to think or assume that the total cash inflows equal the total revenues. Because as you can see, we have the capital of uh, owners inserted, and also we are missing the credit sales from June. So what we can actually do is take the sales revenue and add the credit sales in June. That, if you add all these numbers up, is going to result in the same number, 49,000. Now look at the mark scheme. The mark scheme has a certain uh, details different from our working on. So for example, in the opening balance, they are putting uh, a capital uh, injection of $3,000. And otherwise, the opening balances from February onwards are the same. And also, as you can see, our total inflows are the same. So the only difference in our cash flow forecast is the fact that we decided to put uh, the starting capital as a capital injection of the owners. I don't consider this to be a mistake. Uh, our working out, I believe, would be also marked for full points. So I hope this video helped you uh, in seeing how these questions are calculated, what is the right way how to do it, so that um, the next time that you do a cash flow forecast, you don't get tricked by these different information.